Okay, so here we are uh, beginning our discussion of, of kinetic energy. So we've looked at kind of what work is and, and really kind of a, a vague description of what energy is. And then we looked at power and efficiency. So really today we're going to start investigating uh, one of the two types of energy that we're going to investigate. And today is kinetic energy. We've said that work and energy are different elements, right? right? Really, they're conceptually, they're, they're two different things, right? Energy is kind of this fuel that makes stuff go. Work is basically the transfer of energy between things, right? So it's how energy is transformed. But let's begin to develop the connection between these two because they're both measured in joules. So they can't be that different. Um, conceptually, maybe they're a little bit different, but, you know, we really need to look at um, the connection between the two. The first and the most direct connection comes from the result of work that's being done on an object while it's being displaced. Okay, so what happens, here we've got a block, and we are going to apply a block, a force to this block. Okay, so when you apply a force to this block, we know from dynamics, from kinematics, what's going to happen it's going to move and we're going to experience some motion. Okay, so when work is done on an object, the speed of the object changes. And hey, we could say that the object gains some kind of energy. This force, you know, is, is providing work on an object and <clears throat> there's some kind of energy transfer that's giving us, or that's not giving us, but is giving the block some type of energy that's associated with speed. And we call that kinetic energy. And kinetic energy really is the energy of motion. So starting with work, let's generate an expression for kinetic energy. So here's a little bit of a blank page, and what we have is work is equal to F dot D, the applied force times the displacement. Now we want to keep things as general as possible. So let's use Newton's second law and say, okay, well, F is equal to MA. Okay, and we're going to replace that. So work is equal to mass times acceleration dot distance or times distance. You say, okay, well, wait a second. Let's find an expression for acceleration and let's find an acceleration for displacement because we have two of those and they come from kinematics. So this is question uh, this is equation number 1 and equation number 2 and let's replace simultaneously a and d in this equation we're, we're going to see what shakes out. Right? Also let's just assume um, that the objects initially at rest so that v1s are just going to be zero. They, we don't have to do that, but it's going to make math a little bit easier. And um, So here's what we have. Work is equal to mass, and I've made the substitution. So I've taken this expression for acceleration and popped it in, and I've taken this, exp this um, expression for displacement, and I've popped it in. <clears throat> so I got V2, I got V1, I got time, got the 1 half, and I've got the M. And so, if we set V1 is equal to 0, this is what everything simplifies to, right? Because the times cancel. We've got a time down here in the bottom in the denominator. we got a time up here in the numerator. And so I can rearrange this, and I can just say, oh, okay, 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 here we go. Let's bring the 1 half and the M to the front, and there's V2. And so this is what we determine, and this is what we define as being kinetic energy. So that when a force is applied through a distance on some object of mass m, we come up with kinetic energy, which is defined as 1 half mv squared. And so, hey, we can put that in a box, because that's a pretty important equation. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. <coughs> Now that's assuming that an object started from rest and and that's okay if we hadn't assumed that the object started from rest we just would have had another v1 term in there so we would have had 
you know, really, um, it would have been the change in kinetic energy, and that's okay. Don't worry about that. That's all grade 12 stuff anyways. What's important is that we just kind of made this assumption. We kind of went through here, and we found that, oh, yeah, okay. Just by using dynamics, so Newton's laws and kinematics, we could actually find an expression for, hey, what work is, but work in relation to mass and velocity. And we define that as kinetic energy. So we've seen now kinetic energy depends on mass and velocity. And it kind of makes sense because think about this. If you're at the bowling alley, would you rather have your toes run over by a bowling ball that's rolling towards you at a speed of V? Or have your toes hit by a tennis ball rolling towards you at a speed of V? Of course, the bowling ball has more mass and... Um, then would have more kinetic energy and we I don't I don't think I would want to have my toes hit by a bowling ball I think I would far prefer the tennis ball which is much lighter would you rather be hit by a golf ball that's traveling at a small velocity or be hit by a golf ball that's traveling at a much higher velocity I'll take the small velocity every day any day it's got far less energy that's associated with it so here's example one a hockey puck has a mass of 0 0.2 kilograms and it's accelerated to a speed of 27 meters per second by a slap shot. What kinetic energy does it have when it's at 27 meters per second? And so here's the mass, here's the velocity. And so we've got EK is equal to 1 half mv squared. And we sub the numbers in, and we get 72.9 joules. So that's actually not that much energy, but it's because hockey pucks are pretty light. They can still do damage, but they're, they're pretty light. Now, that's not too difficult um, to, to grasp. Like, that's, you know, that's a plug-and-chug kind of formula. You know, you, you have your formula. You sub everything in. The concepts in this lesson are a little bit more tricky. Again, when you're dealing with energy, when you're dealing with work, the concepts are, you know, are, are really the thing that's more difficult to grasp. So let's continue pushing away at that because remember we said, you know, oh, don't worry, you know, we set V1 in that little derivation we did. We set V1 equal to zero, um, but really we shouldn't have set V1 equal to zero. Um, we did it just so that we could kind of arrive at the equation. It's not that we shouldn't have, it's that we didn't have to because really the most correct form of that really would have been that the work that was done on the object um, really gave us the change in the object's kinetic energy, okay? Because we set V1 equal to zero, and so if we set V1 equal to zero, this second term here, this EK1, would have just been zero, because kinetic energy is zero if the velocity is zero. And so no problem. <coughs> That's why we were able to do it, but we didn't have to do it. And so this is really the more correct conclusion of that derivation is that, hey, all the different types of work that you do in an object give you the change in that object's kinetic energy. And that's a beautiful, beautiful theorem. And it's a, it's a really nice way to work. And it means that we can really take forces that are acting through displacements and turn them into velocities that have to do with mass. So here, work is the the W is, is the total of all the work that's being done on an object. And EK is the change, is the change in kinetic energy. So it's how kinetic energy changes with all this work that's being done. So here is example two. And you'll notice when I read this that, oh, this sounds a lot like kind of a force and kinematics question, but, but we're going to do this using energy. A six kilogram block is initially at rest, and it's pulled across a frictionless surface by a constant horizontal force of 12 newtons. Find the velocity of the block after it's moved three meters. So it's like, oh yeah, okay, you know, find the acceleration first, F equals MA, and then put that into the kinematics equation, and then find the velocity. We don't need to do that anymore. Because we know, here's what we have, and we know 
that whatever work is done on this block is going to create a change in kinetic energy. So let's try this. First of all, <clears throat> let's explicitly write what the change in kinetic energy is. It's 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. And we know that v1 is equal to 0, so it just goes away. We also know that work, and in this case there's only one force that's providing one little bit of work. Work is equal to force times displacement. And that's equal to 1 half mv2 squared. So, we can sub the numbers that we have for this equation in. This is a really useful little equation. And we can get at that velocity right away. And we find that this, the second velocity, the final velocity, after it's been moved 3 meters, is 3.464 meters per second. So really, we got there in one step, but we use completely different concepts to get there. So if you take this exact problem and you were to do this using forces, you would find the exact same thing. And I challenge you to do that. Draw a free body diagram, figure out what the acceleration would be, and then go to town and figure out if you can um, try and get the same answer.